Hi. In this week's video, I'll run through the new update to SoundThread. If you're new here, SoundThread is a modular, node-based interface for experimental audio processing using the Composer's desktop project. There's a full intro video to what this is and what that means linked below. SoundThread has been out for a month now, and the response from the initial release has been amazing. Thank you so much for all the comments, suggestions, bug reports, and a particularly massive thank you to everyone who supported the project on Coffee. Your support makes the future development of SoundThread considerably more viable. Let's take a look at some of the new features, and at the end of this video there'll be some quick instructions for how to update SoundThread. The main addition in this update is the inclusion of about 60 more CDP processes, meaning SoundThread now has over 100 ways to transform and generate sound. In particular, the frequency domain processes have been massively expanded and now include many of the formant processes that have been requested. These processes provide a way to identify and transform prominent spectral peaks in a sound. These peaks, known as formants, are often what give a sound its unique timbre. They work particularly well on speech, but also work well on pretty much any sound. They work particularly well on speech, but also work well on pretty much any sound. I will be doing a full video on how the frequency domain processes work, in particular some of these formant processes, and some tips for using them in the next few weeks. I upload a video every week with some tips on how to use SoundThread in the Composer's desktop project, and you can subscribe if you don't want to miss those. SoundThread now supports loading more than one sound file with the creation of multiple input nodes, and now includes a number of synthesis nodes for generating sounds. Both synthesis and input nodes can be combined in the same thread. I've added a few more utilities to make using SoundThread and the Composer's desktop project easier. There are now nodes for converting between different units of time and for getting specific frequencies, as well as just general purpose utilities like a calculator and the notes. As well as these nodes in the utilities tab, you'll also find the input file node for adding more input files and the new preview node. The preview node can be connected anywhere in a thread and when the thread runs, will allow you to play back how the audio sounded at that point. Files played back by the preview node are excluded from the delete intermediate files toggle so they can be used as a way to get a select few intermediate steps out of your thread for further processing. If you have any suggestions for further utilities that you think would make using SoundThread easier, do let me know in the comments. There's been a few tweaks to how SoundThread works to make it easier to use, in particular searching for processes. The search menu can be opened with Ctrl or Command F, and the search is now much more thorough. You can type in multiple search terms and it will check against them individually, and for those already familiar with the Composer's desktop project, you can now also search for a specific command from CDP to find its node in SoundThread. You can navigate through the search options with tab and go backwards with shift tab and hitting enter will make the selected node. You can still also just click on the node that you would like to create. Automation of more parameters is now possible, including within some of the extend processes which previously did not allow automation. This makes them significantly more flexible and usable. In addition, automation of parameters that have logarithmic scale now also automate logarithmically. The automation window right now is not as good as I'd like it to be, and that will be a focus of an upcoming update. You can check the milestones page on GitHub to see my future development plans. These are changeable, but will give you an idea of the direction that SoundThread is heading. For the next update, I will be focusing on implementing processes that require more than one input file, such as the spectral morphing processes and the texture processes in the Composer's desktop project. The update after that will focus on automation and will look to improve and expand that functionality in SoundThread. If you'd like to discuss future ideas for updates and test development builds, you can join the Discord that is linked below. Thank you to everyone in the Discord who's been giving me help so far. Written install instructions for SoundThread come with every download, and these are always the most up-to-date instructions but if you are installing SoundThread for the first time, there is a walkthrough video for doing that on Mac and Windows linked below. If you're updating SoundThread, you just need to download the latest version from GitHub and allow SoundThread to run. You do not need to reinstall the Composer's desktop project, and SoundThread should remember all your previous settings, including the location of your CD Progs folder. You can delete the old version of SoundThread, or you can keep it. There's no problem with having multiple versions.
functions on your machine. There is a known bug with the filters in the Composer's desktop project on macOS, which causes them to stall on run sometimes. If you've been having problems with that, the latest download of SoundThread comes with a patch. You can check the install instructions that come with the macOS download for how to add that. But in short, you just need to delete the filters program out of the CDP progs folder, put in the new program, and then reapprove the CDP programs to run. SoundThread is still in beta, so things will change in future and there will likely be some bugs in this build. If you do find any bugs, I would really appreciate it if you would report those on GitHub. Once again, just a massive thank you to everyone who supported this project on Coffee. I'll see you next week where we'll be talking about some of the frequency domain processes, what they are and how you might use them. <laughs>